I'm with Jim Bleich, who's a national treasure because there's nobody that knows more about the Uinos, the Spaniards, and the mining the gold, the the Caleb Rhodes Lost Roads Mine, the Sacred Indian, than June. And uh, anyways, he's he's agreed to tell us a little bit about uh, the Moon Lake area and the Rock Creek area and that some of the things that went on because of this uh, uh, treasure hunters Utah treasure hunters get together that we're having and so. With that, June, tell us some stories about that area. Well, I'd be glad to, Terry. Uh, as far as the Moon Lake area goes, uh, I'm only aware of one mine, which I'll tell you a little bit about uh, a little later. The first thing I learned about Moon Lake was, I guess I was about 19 or 20 years old, and uh, I was up there with a friend of mine, and we was pretty close to the uh, Moon Lake Dam. And an Indian that I know pretty well told me, I'm not going to go up there with you if you're going to go on the east side. And I said, well, why not? He said, well, the Indians used to tell a story about a lake monster that came up out of Moon Lake and it always came up on the uh, east side near a uh, place where it could walk. Uh, I understand, I've been told that the deepest part of Moon Lake is uh, on the east side. If in fact a monster did come out on the east side and they seen it in the same place, I would think that it's coming out of a tunnel that's in the Moon Lake. And they come out at the same place because of that tunnel. And then they come out straight up to get on the, the uh, side to walk. Now, they've told the story many times about a monster and that they wouldn't go there. Now. This is the Indians telling us. This. this is an Indian tale. I first learned about it from uh, Carnes La Rose. Uh, he lived in White Rocks. He was about 70 when I was in there at about 20, 21. And I know the La Rose family real well. They're good friends of mine. Uh, so I asked one of the younger uh, the Rose family if they knew about what their grandfather had told me. And they said, yes, we've been told never to go over there and we never did. Uh, we don't know if those stories are true, but we're not going to call our ancestors liars. Uh, I think they've seen something. Uh, I can't tell you what it is because they have no pictures or drawings or anything, but he said that the older Indians had seen, over a period of years, had seen this monster several times. They called it a monster. Hmm. Had to be some sort of a dinosaur type animal that could breathe underwater or could hold its breath a long time till it could come up to get air. Uh, but that remains to be seen. Uh, now, there was a, three Indians that I know that are all related to each other, and I was telling them, if I ask them if they knew anything about the Moon Lake area, as, uh, gold or anything, and he said, no, we don't know anything about that, but we've heard the story about the lake monster up there, and we believe it's true because there was some friends of ours that was driving on that dirt road from Rock Creek over to get to Moon Lake, and when they got to the uh, area where they had turned off of the road that takes you down off of Cart Hollow, uh, where they had that massacre, uh, 
he said that his friends were driving on that dirt road and there was a big tree in the middle of the road and he said it was a funny looking color so we slowed down we didn't want to try to go over it and as we come to a stop the log started to move they said and I said what do you mean it started to move did somebody push it no he said it crawled out of there itself and I said what do you mean crawled out he said it was a snake wow. and they estimated that the snake was from the belly that it crawled on to the top of the snake was eight to ten inches. Wow. That is a big snake. That's a big snake. That's bigger than the pythons in South America. That's a big snake. I've seen them maybe five or six inches around and they can swallow a human hmm. because we've seen the legs sticking out of one of them in a video that i seen, a history video, and that uh, Conda had swallowed a native that didn't come home. Mm. And so they went out hunting for him and they f found this snake. And they, they uh, killed it because it had a big lump in its stomach. After they killed it, they cut it open and it was their uncle wow. that had been squoze to death and then swallowed. Mm. That's that's a big snake, five or six inches to swallow a human like that. Well, anyway, uh, I said, you're sure that your friend said it was a snake? And they said, yes. And they said they watched it, watched it crawl off the road. And so I said, well, do you believe that story? And he says, yeah, we do. I said, why do you believe it? He says, because we've seen one over on Rock Creek after you take the road down off of the past Pigeon Water and down in the canyon and then turn north, north to go up uh, the highway, we encountered a log in the road. And we stopped and we was going to get out and move it, so we all got out of the truck and started to go up. and it, started moving. Mm. It evidently had a keen sense of hearing or maybe it had its head up a ways out and could see. And uh, he said that log moved and we could see it was a snake then. It had some strange colorings on it but we watched it crawl right off the road and down into the brush. And that's why we know it's true, because we've seen one over on Rock Creek, they said. Hmm. And well, I said, I've never had a, an Indian lie to me. Uh, so I'll take your word for it that it's the truth. Now, there was, a, with the story of the dinosaur type animal that come up out of that lake, that reminds me of a story that Wobbin Wonsitz told me when I brought him up out of California. And Wobbin Wonsitz was a, a Ute Indian? Yeah, Wobbin was a Ute Indian and he was, uh, when he was a young boy, about eight years old, they took him to Virginia and had him go to school in Virginia because his father father didn't have anything to do with him, didn't want anything to do with him. And that's a long story to tell that. But anyway, Wobbin said that uh, if you ever get up in this one place, he said, I want you to go to Dinosaur Lake. And I said, well, I will if you tell me where it is. And he said, well, let me tell you the story. So he told me the story about going up through uh, Kidney Lake Basin and dropping down into Squaw Basin and then going up and he got on a trail that took him over in towards the heavy mountain range that's in there and he says as he did 
he, he said, I just decided to follow that trail on up wherever it was going because it was light and I had plenty of time, I thought. So he said he went on up and followed that uh, trail and he said there was some water there coming down in a small stream and then all of a sudden the water disappeared, he said. I don't know where it went. But he says, I followed the trail on up and it took me right to a lake. And he says, I walked up to the edge of the lake and it was just as clear as could be. He said, looks like you could see clear to China. <laughs> anyway, he said that uh, he wanted to get a drink and he knew it probably was good water so he took a little cup and tasted it and then got himself a, a drink. I remember him saying that as he was getting a drink there and looking in the water, all of a sudden he could see ten boxes. He said, just like them boxes I told you about down on Rock Creek. He says he was in the lake and he said, I counted them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yep, ten boxes. One, two, three, four, five. Well, he continued on till he got to ten again and he repeated that three times because that's one way an Indian can tell you something and he doesn't want you to forgive it. He'll tell you the story more times than maybe you want to hear it. And uh, a lot of the stories I learned from the old Indians were like that. They would repeat them. And uh, I had a special thing that happened to me. And I understand now why the Indians talked to me. And it's uh, another big, big story in itself. And, and it was the old Indians that talked to you when you was Yeah, young. old. I was young and and uh, Carnes were rose, but like I say, was in his 70s and white hair, long hair down to his shoulders. And uh, he said, June, if you want to find some gold, why don't you go talk to my son up in Brigham? And he's always up on Farm Creek, and he's looking for something. I don't know what it is. Well, I think he did know, but he wasn't talking about it because his son was up there looking yeah, for it. Yeah. Anyway, um, I visited with his brother and asked him if that's where, if he still lived in Brigham. And he said, yeah, that's where he lives. And I told him what I wanted to talk to him about. And he says, yeah, he goes up there every year looking. I don't know what he's looking for, he said, but he goes up there. Well, I knew of a big massacre up there. So I took my boys up and I told him, just go around all over here looking. If you see something strange, tell me about it or start digging. And My boy went to where there was a big rock on the left-hand side of the road and up into the trees a little. And he said there was some marks on the rock. He didn't understand them, but he said, so I started just digging around the rock. He says, my boy said when he dug down about six or seven inches, not very deep, he, he, he started running into leather, leather soles off of shoes. Hmm. And that's all there was, just the leather shoes. And there was quite a few of them. And they, he found some little trinkets up there. I can't remember what they were. I told him just keep them. Keep them for a treasure or whatever you want to keep them for. And uh, I gave Gail Rhodes one of them. And Gail put a picture of them in, in the first book that he wrote. 
Got to get back on the story. When so Wobbin was at the edge of the lake counting them boxes, and like I say, he counted them three times so that he would know where he, where he was, and he wanted me to remember. Now, uh, he said, as he was looking at them, he said, all of a sudden he seen a big shadow go through the water. And he didn't know what it was, but he just watched it, and he said, now what I'm going to tell you now is Wobbin's own words to me. It's not me that's... Yeah. I'm telling you what he told me. He said that he watched the shadow go north out of the lake. And he said, all of a sudden, a smaller, small dinosaur looking animal, well, the way he told me, I says, he said, this animal walked out of the water on the south side of the lake. And he, I said, well, what were they? And he said, those same damn things over in Vernal. And I said, what do you mean same damn things over in Vernal? He says, dinosaurs. <laughs> I kind of laughed at him. And I said, are you sure there was a dinosaur? And he said, they look just like the ones in Vernal. He said, why wouldn't they be? He said, as I was looking at this young one, or small one, he said, here come another shadow, and it was a big one. And when it came out, it looked like it must be the mother of the small one. And they was both out on the south side of the lake walking around. And I wished I'd have went over and looked and seen if there was any good footprints, but I didn't even think about it. Mm. But he said that uh, finally that they left the south side, went back in the water and went north to go wherever they was going. He said, I didn't know them damn things lived back in that mountain. Because he said the lake was right at the base of a mountain. And uh, I said, well, all right, I'm going to go up and look around. He said, well, when you go, he says, on the south side in the bushes, there's a skull of one of those things. After they left and went in the water, I went down and walked around and I found that skull. And then he said, it's still there. He says, them skulls last a long time. Hmm. He said, I don't know how long that was in there or what caused it to die there. But uh, he says, when you go there, that's the first thing you want to see and try to find. So I went up and I found the area pretty easy, what he was looking for, but uh, there was a lot of uh, hunting going on at that time. And Wobbin said when he was up there, there was hunting going on around, and he heard some shots. And he said when he heard them shots, he says he thought it was an Indian, and he was going to get killed for showing me these. He says, so I run up on the, on the side of the mountain in the trees and just sit there for, I know I must have sit there for two hours waiting to see somebody come out. But he said, I realized it was probably just a shot of a uh, hunter up there hunting. And he said, so I left and come out. So he says, you know what to look for, so... You go up. If you find anything, you let me know. Well, the first thing I looked for was that skull. And I couldn't find it. But I think you could now after that fire. Mm -hmm. That fire went all up through that area and just cleaned the trees and everything right out. Yeah. There's a skull laying there. Now would be the time to go up and look for it. Yeah. And a try to figure out a way to get them boxes out of the lake. Uh, I wanted to get you to go up to your camera and get one of them ones that go down and you can remote and go down and find out where this hole was that they had to come out of. Well, off camera, 
I, I got a guy that has an underwater drone off camera. Tell me where this is at. And we'll go check it out. Find that hole. We can do that. I can't walk anymore, but so, so I'll have to let you swim. <laughs> <laughs> so so um, clear up until the 60s, there was still reportings of a Loch Ness monster type looking thing there in Moon Lake. I, you know, there's one story that there was a couple boaters out there and, and the, that Loch Ness monster looking thing wouldn't let one of them boaters come to shore. Yeah. You well, I'm sure that Wappen told me the truth. He's never, he never ever in the years that I knew him uh, lied to me. And he told me so many stories that would rattle your head. Kind of like you do to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, anyway, while I was telling you that story about the moonlight monster and the fact that the Indians seen these snakes and then the ones that told me, the older ones that told me that don't go on the east side because that's where are those, uh, that monster comes out. Well, it couldn't be a snake there. That had to be, had to be one of the same animals that Wobbin seen and the other Indian seen. Same as the Bigfoot, you know. He told me you go out to uh, uh, the mountains east of the UN is there. What's the name of that range? Uh, oh, it's right on tip of my tongue. Anyway, he said there was a big long ridge across the top of where the Indians used to camp, camp down below. And he said every year there was a Bigfoot that walked across that ridge and he would stop and look down at the Indians. And he said sometimes when the Indians were actually camping there, they'd get rocks thrown at them. Oh really? Yeah. This is Wabin He said about five or six inches around, he said. Really? And he was trying to hit the tents and stuff and go through and hit the guys in them, I guess. But mm -hmm. they just didn't want them in there, yeah. is what it was. But he said that every year, every year when the Indians were over there camping, he said they could see that Bigfoot always going east across that ridge, mm -hmm. going to another place. I imagine they move around a lot uh, I believe they exist. I've seen pictures of them, and there's some good pictures that's taking place now and stories on YouTube of a guy that got chased out of there by one. Anyway, again, like I say, the reason I brought up Dinosaur Lake is it had to be the same animal or the same kind of an animal in Dinosaur Lake as in Moon Lake. Uh, it was Moon Lake. You so think somehow they could have been connected through some kind of an underground tunnel. Oh yeah, I'm sure of that. Uh, he said I didn't. Wobbin says I didn't know them damn things lived back in that mountain. Hmm. Well, maybe they don't entirely, but who knows? A lot of mysteries. So you you was talking about your boy in the Rock Creek area, you know, scratching through the dirt and finding some things. Can you tell about that? That uh, what happened there? Why he was finding that stuff? Can you tell that? Well, what? Re and this is on Indian property, so you can't be going on there. You'll be in big trouble. Well, now. Yeah. They let us go anywhere back then. Yeah, I'm. T I'm telling for for guys that come to this camp out, man. Don't be thinking you're going to go on yeah. the Indian reservation because you get caught. You're in trouble. They're going to call. Yeah, you, you are. Go they'll. And, and the first else. thing they'll do is they'll take everything you've got. Guns. Vehicles, vehicles, everything. anything they want, and they'll take it, and you'll never see it again. Yeah. Yep, that's right. I don't think I'd worry too much about my life, but I don't know of anybody getting killed there. There's early stories in the 30s and 20s when a lot of people came up missing in the units. Huh. But you don't hear of it now. Anyway, uh, the stories about those animals being connected, and like you said, I think there's underground tunnels 
that go through the mountain through limestones. And there's a lot of limestone in the Uinta Mountains. Anyway, you get in that limestone stuff and over hundreds of thousands of years, the water uh, takes and dissolves caves. That's like you see those caves in Nevada and the ones in New Mexico, New Mexico where they have the big crystals. Yeah. Hot in there. Mm. Well, maybe it's warm for the animals inside wherever they go. I don't know. Yeah. Anyway. So that Spanish uh, massacre at uh, Rock Creek, Gary, can you tell that story? or What's that? The Spanish massacre at Rock Creek? Oh, yeah, up there on Farm Creek. Farm Creek, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Wobbin took me up there. He was said, do you know the area of the big trees? And I was down at the bridge with him, and I says, yeah, I know where they are. Well, I didn't. But I figured if there was any big trees up there, I'd see them. So I said, well, he said, let's go up. So I got him in the truck, and up we went. And all of a sudden, here's these big trees up there all by themselves, three of them. And one of them looked like it had been topped. And you know the story about Caleb topping a tree somewhere, and nobody knew why he did it. Yeah. You know. Well, there's uh, several mines in that area there. And uh, Carnes Rose, when I was talking to him, he says, uh, when I was young boy, he said I was just young, and I had a friend of mine, and I'd be darned if I could remember his name. I was just a kid myself. He said, me and my friend were riding horses up uh, Rock Creek, and then we turned up Dick Hollow and started riding up Dick Hollow. And we wasn't too far up the mouth, and we could see four poles standing up and a blanket tied on four corners. And we couldn't figure out what it was, he said. So we got off our horses and called, crawled up the side of the hill. And there was an Indian laying in the four, or in the blanket that had been tied on those four poles, and that was a way that the Shoshone Indians buried their mm. people. And also, if it was a chief, they put him on a four poles and a blanket like that. I don't know who that was. He might have been a chief, for all I know. But it's Shoshone that did that. Wobbin told me there was a, one of the uh, most well-known Indian in the western states here that died. And they put him on four poles over in the Uinas and put, put him tied in a blanket there, or on top of the blanket. And then people started bringing gifts. Hmm. Some brought gold, some brought uh, turquoise in rock. Uh, they brought blankets. He said, I don't know everything, but he said, pretty soon they filled that blanket full. And he said, they all gathered it up and they took it over on the Uinta River and took it in a cave there and put it inside the cave where there's 12 Indians inside in a circle huh. and he said they had guns with them so they they was old they might have been blunderbusters your old spanish ones i don't know i can't tell if they uh, it was that old i haven't seen them i just heard the story from two people actually and uh then they sealed that up again well he said they thought they was probably over getting gifts. The next day, people start bringing more gifts. So this must have been a pretty well-known chief. Yeah. But they did know he was Shoshone because of the way he was buried hmm. on top. Um, I don't recall them telling me how long they left them there. 
but the one over in Dick Hollow when Carnes and his friend found it, it you could still see the flesh on the person. Well, his friend got up and crawled on top with some trees that he had laid on there that he could crawl across. And he said he got on top and this Indian was wearing a silver necklace mm. with turquoise all through it. Just beautiful turquoise. Well, he said my friend decided he wanted that. So he took it off and put it around his neck. Then he come down and showed me what he got. And I told him, I said, I don't know if I'd have took that if I was you. Why not? He said, what do you know if somebody's watching you? You might not like what happens. He said, well, I'm not worried. So he says, we got on our horses and started up Dick's and we hadn't got more than 20 feet away from that. And he said, all of a sudden, that friend of mine pulled back on his reins on his horses and stopped. And he said, what's the matter? And he said to me, I got to put that back. He says, they told me to put it back or I would regret it. Mm. So he heard something, I don't know what. <laughs> and he took it back, Wobbin said, and put it back up on that Indian's neck and come down. Then he felt good, he said. Mm. He said, we went on up Dick Hollow, and I'm not going to tell you exactly where this is, yeah. but it uh, was easier for me to find. Anyway, uh, Karn said they went up Dick Hollow up the bottom, and he said there was a trail that took up, up over towards the north and uh, he told me where it went and uh, I knew what he was talking about but he said they found a tree that had been big tree that had been turned over on the trail he said we thought it might have got knocked over from wind or something but we could see when we went and looked at it that it had been chopped at the bottom. So somebody chopped that so that tree would fall, off, fall over the face of that mine. Hmm. I've never told you this story, have I? I don't know. I don't think I have. Anyway, he, Wobbins, I mean, uh, Karn said that uh, they got off their horses to take them around that rock and when they, or that tree, and when they did, they could see just a dark spot behind that tree. And they looked and they could tell there was a hole there. So he said they squeezed through that top and went in there and there was a tunnel that went back in. And he said there was gold in the rock. You could see it just poking out. And he said, I'm sure they didn't want anybody to find that. Yeah. Whoever, you know, bent that, cut that tree down, he said. But he said, uh, we fooled around there for quite a while and there were some marks on the trees. And there was two hearts and a diamond. Same as uh, a friend of mine found just last year. He found a tree, three trees with two hearts and a diamond. Hmm. And he said, I didn't have a camera or anything, so I said he went back the next day with the camera to see these trees and take pictures of them. He took a friend with him, and he said the tree had been cut down and was burning. He said it was still smoldering. Mm. Wow. And I said, well, those marks would still be in the tree. You probably didn't know that, but you could roll them and turn them over. So maybe I can get him to go back. That's not a bad trip up there. Mm. He's got horses, so ah. we're pretty good. Anyway, there's lots of places up there. I've got, Woman told me that there was 102 Spanish mines in the Uintas. Wow. 
102. After seeing what I've seen and the maps that I've got. And we just went through a bunch of your maps because they, well, there's they got at least 50 in there. Spilled and scattered. And it's your kind of private collection of things that you drew from what the old Indians told you and the different stories and that. And yeah. That's pretty impressive there. Thanks yeah. Let me see it. I've got over 50 Spanish maps. All yeah. for the UN is pretty much, huh? All, no. No, there's one for Wyoming. Uh, there's one that takes you clear over to the head of Lost Creek. That's not New Ennis, although it's on the edge of it. Mm. Anyway, I could tell you stories for 15, 20 hours, I guess. I know you could, because I went to New Mexico with you, and you told me stories all the way there and all the way back. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and I want you to remember them. Yeah, and because they all ran together, because they heard so many all at once, I don't remember none of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I show you them maps, and you say, I think I've seen that one. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I didn't finish telling you the story up Farm Creek. <laughs> uh, I was up there with Wobbin, and I said, there's the trees right there. And he said, yeah, that's them. He says, now, I'm going to tell you where to go. So he proceeds to tell me a certain trail to get on and to follow it around. And he says, if you do, you can follow that right to one of them holes that Caleb Rhodes was getting gold out of. And he said, when you go in it, he says, it looks like footsteps going down, but they're natural layers of rock, hmm. sedimentary rock. And he said, when you get in there, you'll see steps, and you go right down on them steps. When you get down maybe eight or ten feet at an angle, and he said, it opens up big in tunnels in there. And he said, it reminded me a story about what what uh, Tuurus had told Don Foot, and he told him a, about a certain mine, and he said, "Big man can't enter. Small hole. Once inside, go all right. Big." That reminds me of what I was being told to get on that trail and to get in there on them steps. But he said, when you get in there, he said, that'll be a big haul if you want to make it. He said, because there's gold in the walls all over in there. Hmm. And uh, I never did go in because it's Indian land and the only time I went up there to verify where this one place was that I come up on uh, Big Ridge past Blue Lake and then I w come down as far as you could go on top of Big Ridge and then it dropped down on a steep hill and that puts you right on the Indian land. They don't have a fence up there but it's uh, Indian land where it is. Yeah. But anyway there's places all over, like the one I showed you, up there where my, in, I didn't have my instrument, but I showed you anyway. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. That's a big vein up there, big vein. And it, in fact, a little portion of it shows up on Rock Creek. Comes all the way through that mountain, down the ridge, and, uh, past a big grove of trees and then down to the creek and right close to the bridge. And I was up there with an Indian and he put, showed me them that big rock and he said, look at it careful down there. And I looked at it and it had square holes in it all through it. Really? You know what that means. <laughs> anyway, uh, 
he said the Indian that showed the Indian that showed me told him now you know where that is and he says I'll show you so he took me up we looked at this rock and he says where's it pointing and I looked and I said well it looks to me like it's going right up there towards that great big saddle and he said that's right where it is hmm. he says they was mining this on the other end up there so I thought that's interesting you can you know tie them in pretty well yeah anyway there's there are just so many places up there and what you have to remember or the anybody that's looking for them is that they've all been sealed when I found that corn gold up there where it was located and also the uh, uh, sacred Indian mine uh, I just found it with my instruments I didn't go over but they don't lie it says it's there it's there it's been a hundred percent accurate so far but uh, anyway the uh, everything has been sealed by the Indians one way or another if it was a tunnel they would stack rocks on in layers and stuff so they could go over the hole and they'd go back in the tunnel a little ways uh, the sacred Indian mine was sealed a very very special way which I'm not going to get into right now because the Indian that told me told me not to repeat what he's telling me yeah so I can't right. unless I write my word to him anyway that was sealed a very very special way and nobody will ever find the sacred mine unless there was some kind of a flood there and I don't know how that could happen where it is but the uh, corn gold what they done is they went up where it come to the surface and they dug it all out about six or eight inches deep that's all that loose gold that was there put it in buckets or bags whatever they had with them and they took it somewhere and dumped it in a hole somewhere you know and then they just shoveled dirt in the top of what they dug out where that vein was and there's one there and there's three on the other side of the mountain hmm. so like I say there's well, Wadman told me there's 102 mines. He said the old, old Indians used to sit and talk about it. And he was so, related to the old Yeah, well, chiefs. he was, uh, yeah, Dick Juan Rhodes was his nephew. Wadman, or I mean, no, yeah, he was Dick Juan Rhodes' nephew, not, not yes, the reverse. Son. And uh, his mother, was a Juan Rhodes and he married she married Wanzitz I asked Wobbin one time what was your dad's first name he says I don't know he said I know I never did hear it mm. <laughs> and I thought that was kind of funny but they just called him old man Wanzitz mm. and I guess I was the young Wanzitz <laughs> He said, you know, there's a big rock there right across from the, up from the bridge a little ways across the creek. There's a big rock there with my name on it and a date. In Rock Creek? or Yeah, in Rock Creek. I think it says Wobbin Wanzitz 1905. Uh -huh. uh, that his birth date, something like that. Yeah. I went across the river there and looked at it. And he took a little time chiseling it in. Hmm. But there's a lot of things can be found if you know where to look or if they'll show you. Yeah. Well, and, and, and a lot of times they, they don't want anything to do with it. it was, it's 
bad luck for him, bad medicine. Just like oh, yeah. when you took me to meet that one who where you showed him where the gold was and, and his brother double crossed him on it and it caused problems with the whole family so he didn't want nothing to do with gold anymore. He didn't want to help us work out on getting something done on the Indian ground or anything because yeah. of that, yeah. Yeah, and he still still feels like that. He just it broke his heart when he, yeah. when his own so brother the done that to him. Destroyed yeah. the whole family, so he didn't want nothing to do with the gold. It, it destroyed their whole family. Yeah, he says something will always happen to you if you're an Indian, and you've been told to leave it alone. Yeah. He said they don't want the young young Indians. They'll be out looking for things, messing around. They'll accidentally find something, and the older Indians will always tell them. Leave that alone. You've been told not to touch it. So they still get through to them uh, away, and uh, if they're gonna, if you think an Indian's gonna tell you something, these young Indians, they don't know where anything is, and they'll tell you they do to get you to tell them where you are, where it is. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> I've had that happen to me. Ah. Twice. Hmm. Yeah. Well, I'd have to think long and hard on trying to come up with something else to tell you. Well, that's uh, more than I expected, so thank you. <laughs> well, that's a that's a wrap.